Hey, Sterile Processing Professionals, Brandon the Sterile Guy here. Now, today's video was requested by many of you, and I'm sorry it's taken so long to get to this, but today we're gonna talk about the three sink decontamination process. So the three bay sink process didn't become required by Amy until the 2017 edition. In the prior version of Amy, it had some verbiage that talked about that it recommended a three bay sink, but it didn't require it. So it wasn't really anything that you could leverage with your leadership to upgrade those old sinks. And I have seen departments that had or still have have two base sinks where they are using that to clean and decontaminate instruments. Now, the reason the old version Amy had verbiage talking about recommending three base sinks is because it wanted to give hospitals across the nation time to kind of prep and plan for those upgrades because capital expenses are not cheap and it's hard to get hospital leadership to commit to that. But once the 2017 version came out, it is now required. I remember in 2016, well, 2015 and 2016, I was really pushing to get my leadership to approve a capital expenditure for remodeling my decontamination sinks from a two bay to a three bay and I wasn't having a lot of luck. Amy wasn't requiring it yet. It was just recommended. So I was getting pushback. There was other projects they wanted to fund over this, and I just didn't have the, the leverage I truly needed to get this pushed through. At the time, I had leaders like this, and I'm sure you've encountered leaders like this, that only care about the absolute minimum requirements, and anything and above, they just ignore you. And it is freaking bullshit. But then came along the 2017 edition of Amy and I got to take that beautiful manual and shove it in my executive's face and I got awarded my project. And a little side note for any of you watching this video, this is actually the point where I got the name The Sterile Guy from. In all these construction meetings, I was attending these and making sure that construction was on point and that they were gonna be using the proper infection control policies and that we were gonna do it in stages that didn't interrupt my production. And there's this one point where the lead contractor was talking about a situation and um, I walked in the room and he goes, there he is, the sterile guy. And it was born. Every time I ever saw that contractor again for many more projects after that, I was always known as the sterile guy. I, I can't even remember a time he ever called me Brandon. So for those of you who are actually watching this video, you're welcome. Not a lot of people know that. So the verbiage that specifies the requirement for three base sinks can be found in Amy ST 79 2017 on page 21. Under design consideration, it lists three base sinks. It also gives their specifications requiring a working surface space enough to hold a tray as well. So it's not just three bays, it's an actual flat surface connected to it where you can actually stack a tray and actually go through it. But I know you don't wanna just know about the requirements to have a three bay sink, you wanna know how to use a three bay sink. So let's get into that. We'll do the process one bay at a time. So in the first bay sink, you actually have two choices of what you use this for. In the route you go, depends on if your facility uses pretreatment enzymatic. Here's what it says in chapter 7.6.1. Items should be pretreated with an initial cold water rinse with running tap water or an initial soak in cool water and or a clinical soil dissolving pretreatment product. How confusing was that phrase to you? Probably pretty confusing. So let's break it down. The first part says cold water rinse or cold water soak. So right off the bat, you have to decide which one you're gonna do, a cold water rinse or a cold water soak. Then it says and slash or, which usually means it's giving you an option. But in this case, what it is saying is making it very confusing. So if you rinse, it's and pretreatment soil dissolving. If you chose soak in cold water, then it is either a soak or a pretreatment, which already includes a rinse with it. You might be asking the question, how am I coming to the conclusion that if I use pretreatment that it automatically comes with a rinse. I'm glad you're paying attention to detail here. Here's what it says just a couple pages back when it's talking about pretreatment. Unfortunately, in this paragraph, they also refer to pretreatment as pre-soaking, 
which is kind of a bad choice of words, especially when we're talking about these very technical steps. But it says pre-soaking after point of use with a product intended to loosen soil. And it says instruments should be thoroughly rinsed after pre-soaking. So if you use pre-treatment, you must rinse. You can't soak it and just expect that that's gonna remove all the pre-treatment soil still on the instruments. So all that to say, if your operating room uses a pre-treatment enzyme like the enzyme spray, the enzyme gel, foaming product, then your first base sink will be a cold water rinse, not only to remove the debris, but to remove the product itself from the instruments. If your OR does not pre-treat your instruments with any type of product, then you must cold water soak the instruments. Now here's the deal up front. Can you have instruments pre-treated, rinse them with a cold water, and then give them a cold water soak? Yeah, you can do that. It's a lot more extra work than you need to do, but yes, you could do that. You could add to it. You just can't take away from it. I'm just trying to break down the, the verbiage to give you a better algorithm of how to approach this process within your decontam. Now, in my opinion, the first base sink should only be for cold water rinse. And the reason I say that is because every operating room should be treating your instruments with a pre-treatment product. And if they aren't, they are not following point of use cleaning steps. So the reason you have the option between a soak and a rinse is only because it is dependent on what your operating room is doing to treat or not treat those instruments. And pre-treatment is according to Amy. And just so you know, AORN has adopted from Amy, point of use cleaning for nurses and techs. And let me tell you, I've taken the certified surgical technologist exam for certification and point of use cleaning is on it. But that's a soapbox for another day. One of the other questions you might be asking is why cold water and not like warm or hot? If you're like me at home doing dishes, I like to use warm water. I feel like it works better on getting all the food and stuff off my plate. However, unless you're Jeffrey Dahmer, you're probably not washing human blood and fat and bones off of your instruments and plates. When you submerge blood into hot water, you actually cause it to coagulate, which is a term for hardening. You actually help it to harden to the surface that it's on. When you use cold water, it doesn't give blood opportunity to do that coagulation process, keeping it wet and helping it get off the surface much easier. Now let's move on to the second sink bay. And this one is actually much easier. This is the sink bay where you soak your instruments in warm water within a temperature range with enzymatic for a specified period of time, which is usually like two to five minutes. And this is also the sink where once it's soaked for that amount of time, you're actually scrubbing the instruments under the water in that same bay. And last thing I forgot to mention is dosing, making sure that the enzymatic is dosed appropriately with the amount of water that is in that sink. Easy. That's your second base sink. And now the third base sink. This is where your rinsing and your final rinsing should be occurring. So once you're done scrubbing and cleaning that instrument tray, you need to rinse all the debris and enzymatic product off of those instruments and the trays itself. Because any of that product left on getting into an open wound could cause some complications for a patient. And yes, the next step might be putting those trays in a washer disinfector that has rinse cycles. But here's the problem. From the sink, how long do some of those trays sit before they actually hit the washer disinfector? How much time do they have to dry and harden all that product or even leftover debris onto the instruments themselves. So you rinse everything off really good, and then you do one more rinse with critical water, especially for instrument trays that require it in their IFUs. So your initial tap water rinse gets all your product and your debris off, hopefully. That critical water then gets any leftover dissolved solids like salts and minerals and maybe even leftover product that the tap water didn't get. And this helps with the the quality and the the 
life cycle of your instruments. So let's recap real quick. Sync number one, if your instruments are pre-treated with enzyme, this will be a cold water rinse. If they're not pre-treated, this will be a cold water soak. Sink bay number two. This is for the dual process of soaking your instrument trays in warm water with enzymatic, with the proper dosing for the proper time at the proper temperature, and cleaning the instruments under the surface of the water in that same bay. And sink bay number three is for rinsing and for your critical water rinsing. You're removing all chemicals, debris, and dissolved solids from those instruments. Man, I really hope this video helped to break down the confusing language around the three bay sink process. There's lots of other articles out there that you can read about the cleaning process or even the three bay sink process, but unfortunately, I haven't found one that's actually broke down the difference between a cold water rinse and a cold water soak and why. And it's because people are so confused by this subject. And I really hope that in the next revision, Amy cleans this up. It's too easy to have an algorithm of if your OR does this, you do this. Or if your OR doesn't do this, you do this. That would be too easy. The other thing is because companies like Steris and all this stuff, they have the best intentions in mind and they just assume that everyone uses pretreatment like they're supposed to, which is a great assumption. We should assume that everyone does that. We should assume that we should find that, but unfortunately we still don't. And that is one of those battles we will continue to fight along with proper pay for sterile processing technicians and everything else that we're fighting for. But any other topics or videos you want to see, please put those in the comments down below. Don't forget to like and subscribe. I love you guys and I'll catch you guys in the next video.